Henry and Company in Clearfield. Find furnishings, antiques, and rugs. ABC 23 News. We're here for you. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Natalie Fennell. Angie Bodorf has the night off. He's helped put out some of the region's biggest fires for three decades. Tonight, an Altoona Fire Department captain is fighting for his life after receiving critical burns at a training site. Melissa White has the story. Anytime you ask him to do anything, he's there. He doesn't ask for overtime. He doesn't ask to be paid. He just, he's glad to be in the fire service. And uh, he was late coming into our department, but he's a major asset. And uh, we're hoping he pulls through this and gets back to us because we need him. Altoona Fire Captain Robert Gallardi remains in critical condition after being severely burned in a fire training building Sunday afternoon. It happened at the State Fire Academy in Lewistown. Gallardi was working as an adjunct instructor when he became trapped. Third degree burns of 75% of his body is not good. He does have some respiratory problems. He took some heat down uh, in his respiratory system. Gallardi was flown to the Lehigh Valley Burn Unit. Family members and regional fire officials by his side, all hoping for the best. And it's a sad time for our fire department because everybody knew Bob Gallardi throughout uh, uh, central Pennsylvania. And he was an instructor and a firefighter at Summerhill, volunteer fire department, and uh, also uh, a member of our department for nine years and just recently made captain. But Gallardi has worked in the fire service for nearly three decades, and officials say under a controlled situation, someone with that much experience should have been able to escape. I mean, he was a good instructor, a very knowledgeable. In fact, he taught firefighter fi safety in which you evacuate when things go wrong. You bail out. If your air mask malfunctions, you can override that and get out of a building, and he knew how to do that. In Blair County, I'm Melissa White. A full investigation is being conducted by the state and OSHA. We'll have the latest on his condition as it becomes available. It was pretty chilly out there today. Let's go over to Travis Koshko for the first look at your AccuWeather forecast. Travis. Hi, Natalie. Chilly indeed. And guess what? The chill going to change raindrops to snowflakes in a very short period of time. Most of the region has been looking at rain the last six hours, though in Somerset County, around Stoystown, Jennerstown, and in Somerset, I've had reports of some snowflakes that have already accumulated on the ground. We are going to see rain showers change to snowflakes. We have a pre-winter storm on our hands. I'll walk off the screen and show you what we have. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning that is in effect for Elk, Cameron, Northern Center, Clearfield, Somerset, and in Cambria counties until 8 p.m. tomorrow. They're calling for six to nine inches of snow on the ridges, two to five inches in the valleys, in the warned areas. That is certainly going to pose some problems. Do watch out for slick roads, limited visibility, and down tree limbs. Now in other parts of the region, we are going to see light accumulations of snow. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Your AccuWeather forecast for tonight brought to you by the Somerset Trust Company calls for occasional rain. The rain will mix in with snow, especially in the mountains above 1,800 feet. Expect about one to two inches of snow before morning in those higher elevations with lows overnight around 36 degrees. Complete rundown of the storm and what to expect coming up in just a bit. We'll see you then, Natalie. Thanks, Travis. Some tense moments today after a bomb scare at a Penn State University Park. Police say this is the fourth bomb threat this month in Center County, leaving investigators searching for a possible connection. Penn State Police sent crews and a bomb detection dog to, old, to the old main building last Friday. Police say when a staff member received a threat, the building was evacuated and a search began, resulting in no bomb found. Ferguson Township Police responded last week to a bomb threat at the Advanced Auto Parts store along Ather North Ather Atherton Street. Police also say two bomb threats were, de were declared earlier this month in Cato Park, including the Arts Conservatory. A Holidaysburg man is being held on home confinement after police say he made a bomb that exploded inside a local home. 38-year-old Mark Berger was in federal court in Johnstown today for a detention hearing. Federal Magistrate Keith Pesto releasing him from prison until his arraignment next month. Agents from the ATF say Berger made a bomb that exploded inside a Holidaysburg home last week. No one was injured during that incident. Agents say they are investigating this as a violent crime and is getting top priority. Federal charges have been filed against him. Jury selection is wrapping up in the homicide trial of a local man charged with brutally murdering Holidaysburg woman. Only one alternate needs to be picked in deciding the fate of Paul Aaron Ross. All 12 jurors and three alternates are in place 
Ross is accused of raping and murdering 26 year old Tina Miller last year. Prosecutors say jury selection will end tomorrow and say trial could start as early as Thursday. If convicted, Ross could face the death penalty. It could be several more weeks before an accused killer faces charges. Last week, Omar Williams was extradited to Johnstown from New York. He's wanted for a fatal shooting back in 2003 in which one person was killed and another injured. Williams is wanted, was a wanted fugitive until being captured by the U.S. Marshals several months ago. On Friday, a Cambria County judge sent the case back to the magistrates. Court officials, however, say it could take several weeks for, the pap for paperwork to be done before preliminary hearing is scheduled. A Belfont man is behind bars tonight after seriously injuring a man during an altercation. Police say 22-year-old Joachim Hall beat Nathan Bombach over the head with a club back in July. Investigators say the, the blow caused severe internal injuries to the point where Bombach needed surgery. Hall faces several assault charges. He'll face a judge for a preliminary hearing on Wednesday. What began as a traffic ticket for running a red light leads to a Center County man behind bars after a high speed police chase. Police arrested 28 year old James Lowe of Phillipsburg yesterday after they say he wouldn't pull over at the intersection of Pine Street and Route 322. During the chase, police say Lowe smashed into the fence, then intentionally slammed into a police cruiser. Lowe is charged with aggravated assault, DUI, and nearly 20 other traffic violations. Coming up next on ABC. C23 News, you'll never believe what two local men are accused of doing with a credit card. We'll explain. And a Penn State group is trying to send a powerful message during a campus protest. That's coming up. Cool 101.7 is number one for fall fun. You can win thousands and thousands of dollars with the cool cash and hot tub giveaway. Oh Money does grow on trees. Listen to win on the Aldi Station. Cool 101.7. A room of new furniture, a whole house full of furniture. Imagine a $10,000 furniture shopping spree. Wolf Furniture is giving you a chance to win a $10,000 shopping spree. Just watch one of these shows on ABC 23 each weekday. GMA at 7, Martha at 10, The View at 11, and Tyra at noon. The grand prize drawing will be held during Extreme Makeover Home Edition on November 20th. So watch ABC 23 for your chance at a $10,000 shopping spree from Wolf Furniture. Two local men are accused of stealing a credit card and using it in exchange for drugs and sex. Police say the stolen Sheets Fleet card was used 78 times in less than three days at Sheets stores across Cambria and Somerset counties. Two men, Cameron Pollard of Johnstown and, Sw and Sean Anglica of Somerset, now facing prostitution and theft charges. Police say the pair are the masterminds behind the whole operation. Investigators say the men allowed people to use the card in exchange for cocaine and sex. Both both men are appearing in court next month. Held against her will and raped. That's what police say happened after rescuing a Johnstown woman from her attacker. John Safco of Lower Yoder Township be is behind bars tonight. West Hills Regional Police say they were called to his home along Will uh, well on Willett Drive after neighbors heard yelling. When officers arrived, they spotted Safco through his window, kicking and beating the woman while she was screaming for help. Investigators say Safco locked her inside the home, raped her, and repeatedly beat her. He's facing charges of unlawful restraint, rape, and reckless endangerment tonight. Pennsylvania has lost another military man serving in Iraq. Officials say Steven Zwydek was killed during a roadside bomb blast last Thursday, 25 miles west of Baghdad. Military officials say a southern Fulton County resident joined the Marines just four days after his high school graduation. They also say two other Marines were killed in that same blast. Officials say nearly 2,000 members of the United States military have been killed since the beginning of the war in Iraq. A Penn State students were demonstrating some powerful messages today during a peaceful protest. A warning to you at home, some of these images may be hard to handle. A Penn State Students for Life organization held the protest to try and raise awareness about genocide and abortion. Students constructed what they were calling a mini gap or genocide awareness project to be viewed around Nittany Nation. Graphic images on display are comparing historic tragedies such as the Holocaust, Holocaust to abortion. Uh, it would be to plead with people to recognize the dignity of the child at the moment of conception at fertilization and that it should be protected. 
throughout all nine months of pregnancy. A police officer was on hand this afternoon to make sure the protest didn't get out of control. Stay tuned, Travis will be back with your complete AccuWeather forecast. But first, the American Red Cross needs your help. Blood types O and B negative are in critical need, and A negative is in urgent need. Here's a list of locations where you can donate. Next, all new Martha. Do you feel your age? You don't have to. You can feel younger, much younger. And would you believe it? It all starts at your kitchen table. Health expert Dr. Weil is here with his simple secrets to feeling your best. Tell us how. Then, three million pounds gone. How do they do it? Richard Simmons, of course. The fun-loving fitness guru shares his secrets to looking your best. An invigorating hour. Next, all new Martha. Would you take back a cheating spouse? A husband betrayed. They crushed me. And this unfaithful wife. I feel like I've destroyed the whole family. Get her family back. Do you want to be with your wife? Next Tyra. Surf on over to www.abc23.com for all your local news, weather, sports, and network programming needs. Windbeam, the official internet provider of ABC 23. Attention all Americans who take prescription medicines. A free prescription drug discount card is now available to a limited number of qualified residents in your state. This valuable card could guarantee you the lowest prices for all your prescription drugs. And it's free to the first 10,000 residents in your state who qualify. To find out if you qualify, you must call this toll-free number. Again, only the first 10,000 qualified residents in your state will be issued this free prescription drug discount card, which ensures you huge savings on all your prescription drugs and could guarantee you the lowest prices available anywhere. If you take prescription medicines, you could start saving money immediately, but you have to call to qualify. And only the first 10,000 residents in your state will qualify. So call now and start enjoying huge savings on your prescriptions. Call 800-592-3936. That's 800-592-3936. And welcome back to ABC 23 News. Thanks for staying up late with us. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas and it's not even Halloween yet. A little bit of snow in the forecast, believe it or not. Your weather 411, dose of winter indeed, complete with snowflakes and cold temperatures. Snow accumulations will be possible, especially in the higher ground between now and midday Wednesday. We'll talk about how long it's going to last. Well, we'll just answer that question, but how much are we going to get? To understand what's happening, got to talk about Wilma first. She is a strong Category 3 hurricane, sustained winds at 125, gusts at 145. She is flying along. Moving to the northeast at 47 miles an hour. And believe it or not, the moisture that you see in the right part of your screen, this is actually from Wilma. The rest of this stuff comes from a low that's just to our southwest and swirling around in a counterclockwise fashion. The two actually going to play off of each other and make for a very messy midweek. Current temperatures, the coldest numbers in the Laurel Highlands and Somerset and Johnstown, but State College at 39, not too bad just yet. Not cold enough for it to snow, but we've already seen some snowflakes in parts of Somerset County. In fact, it's been snowing in some parts of Somerset County since 430 this afternoon or yesterday afternoon. Here's what's going to happen. Storm to our southwest will give us some snow showers and rain showers as it passes by to the south later on today. Then it's going to meet up with the moisture and the remains of Wilma and then ride up the coast out of harm's way. We will see snow from this as it passes south and as it rides the Atlantic seaboard. But keep this in mind, it's only going to be the higher elevations that see the real significant accumulations of snow. Central Pennsylvania and points west of Johnstown, Somerset, closer to Pittsburgh will actually end up with more of a rain snow mix. Surface map looks like this. The storm will very slowly move through the region tonight and tomorrow. It'll exit stage right, taking its remains along with it. By midday Wednesday, things should have wound down and we'll just be resorting to rain showers for Wednesday afternoon. Thursday actually looking pretty good. Slim chance of a shower, but with high pressure just to our southwest, we should see a little bit of sunshine. 
Now, how much can we expect? Here's the breakdown. The highest amounts will be found in the Laurel Highlands, Cambria, Somerset County, also Clearfield County, Cameron, and Elk Counties, where the upper end of this range will not be out of the question. Most of those places will be between four to eight inches. Highest amounts being found in the mountains in western Somerset County, bordering with Westmoreland County. Now, central Pennsylvania, not bad. An inch or two maximum more rain expected for Blair, Huntington, and Bedford Counties. Center County, a little bit of everything. Southern Center County, including Bullsburg and State College only about an inch or two between now and midday Wednesday. You make your way over the hills towards Phillipsburg and up towards Snowshoe and Clarence. You're going to find yourself in the upper range of one to six inches, maybe about three to six inches when all is said and done. But as I said, as you can see, the general trend, the valley spots, the lower lying areas, those are going to be the most rainy spots of the region with the higher snowfall amounts found in the mountains. So breaking it down, your Tuesday rain snow mix expected, changing to snow in the elevations above 1800 feet. Those spots will see a wet one to three inches, less in the valleys, more rain mixing in. It'll be a windy day too, high of only 39 degrees. Your Maple City tire extended forecast looks very cloudy and somewhat miserable all the way through to, well, how about the end of the weekend? Clouds will hang tough. Believe it or not, we will see some showers on Sunday. Friday might get by without the showers, but there's some chance of those happening. Monday, partly sunny, highs in the lower 50s. So really, Natalie, it is not uncommon to see snow this early, but definitely a shock to the system considering last week we had sunshine and temperatures near 70. All right, Travis, well, thank Have you. Have fun shoveling. Yeah, all right, we'll be right back. It's the beginning of the end for an eyesore in Johnstown. Crews now starting the process of tearing down the old CSX building. They say asbestos is being removed. Once torn down, redevelopment director Ron Repack tells ABC 23 that the city plans to turn the site into a beautification project. The old structures lies at the bottom of the bypass and officials say it's the first thing tourists see when they drive into town. The Earth Movers company was given the $38,000 project and now only have 45 days to tear it down. Local officials say a National Park Service grant will help bring much needed tourism to our region. The Allegheny Ridge Corporation received more than $70,000 check to enhance the Junietta River water trail. The money comes from a Chesapeake Bay Gateways grant and will be used to make the site more tourist friendly. Plans include safety signs, displays and new web based and printed maps. Attracting more tourism in this area is, is absolutely uh, critical uh, to the area for our economy uh, here in the local area. In Pennsylvania, tourism is the second largest uh, uh, segment of our economy. Uh, so that, that's extremely important that we were able to showcase uh, what we have here as far as outdoors uh, and the recreation that we have to offer. Uh, the water trail is one of nearly 150 historic sites in the Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network. A young Johnstown woman is making quite a name for herself and her horse. A national honor is putting the Johnstown Somerset area on the map. And for this 19 year old, that's just the beginning. Sherry Staley has the story. Meet 19 year old Caitlin Thomas and her purebred Arabian and best friend Angelica Bay. The 10 year old horse, her ticket to a big honor and a big title. For the first time ever, a local horse and rider bringing home top honors from the Arabian Sport Horse Nationals held in Lexington, Virginia. Tough. It was tough. It was the best in the country, so. It's very impressive. Riding has been in Caitlin's blood since before she could walk. By four, she was an avid rider and has no plans to slow down her horse career. Thomas, a civil engineering major at the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown, also holds a 3.85 GPA and is on the Dean's list. This latest title, a dream come true. Oh, good. You know, I felt proud of where I, I come from and I know that my horse is awesome and that uh, I got her there. So I, just, I felt really good to be there. 
Caitlin and Angelica Bay now plan to keep their national title, but it won't be easy. After Christmas, extensive training will once again resume for horse and rider. Hundreds of hours in training and every weekend spent competing. But for this local pair, it's an honor they'll do together. Yeah, it's, we have to be like one. I mean, she, I have to know what she's thinking, or at least attempt to know what she's thinking. And she has to feel me and feel what I'm thinking, you know, what we're doing. And we do have to work as one out there. You know, you can't go out and not ride her and then expect to go and do so well. I mean, it's a partnership that's, you know, taken a couple years to form. Caitlin and Angelica Bay ride for the Stone Hollow Ranch in Davidsville. Coming up, sports is next. Ready for some answers and questions? Try this one. This droopy-eared critter is often used to track people. See if you've got the right question on the next Jeopardy. WATM ABC 23, entertaining you. This week on Wheel, it's College Kids Cash and Prizes. Sounds good to me. And College Kids love road trips, so we're sending them off in style. Everybody's a winner. Be a winner, too. Watch the next Wheel. WATM ABC 23, entertaining you. What a difference a week makes. The Steelers wondering what went wrong after a bumbling loss to Jacksonville eight days ago rebounded the convincing win over AFC North rival Cincinnati. Could be argued that the biggest right difference now, was the return of Big Ben, but a closer look shows it was the return of the Steelers' game plan that led to victory. Pittsburgh was able to grind out 221 yards on the ground, and Roethlisberger, although efficient, only threw the ball 14 times, completing nine for 93 yards. In other words, it was back to the basics and back in the hunt for a second straight division title. I have no problem with the with the attempt so low as long as we're winning football games and uh, they did a great job. The linemen really sell it. Uh, you know, we have those plays and I tell the running backs, you know, let's sell this, sell it good, and they do a great job of selling it. And, and guys get open. I mean, Heath's Heath was so wide open. You'll never, I'll never have a touchdown pass that easy again. And uh, Hines, you know, made a play, sold sold the guy outside and came underneath. So, uh, you know, because we're running the ball so well, it really makes those play action passes down there open up. Well, we're a run team. I mean, we're gonna run first and we're gonna keep running until they stop it. And uh, Jerome and. Deron and Willie, I mean, they just they just kept pounding. You got to give a lot of credit to to our offensive linemen and uh, to the receivers blocking downfield. Monday night football, Falcons hosting the Jets. Third quarter, Atlanta up 20 to seven and adding Michael Vick, his second rushing touchdown of the game. Falcons take a commanding 27 to seven lead. Jets able to make things interesting early fourth. Curtis Martin plunges in from a yard out, but that's as close as they'd get. Falcons improved to five and two on the season, 27-14, the final score. The BCS has a different look, not an entirely new look, just a different one as Texas has jumped over Southern Cal for the top spot in this week's rankings. As for Penn State, fresh off of a 63-3 drubbing of Illinois, up one spot to ninth in the standings. The Lions control their own destiny, went out and grabbed the Big Ten title, as well as the conference's BCS bull bid. Here's a look at the top five. Again, the Longhorns take over first place. The Trojans number one in both the USA Today coaches and the Harris Interactive polls, but the computers favor the Longhorns. Virginia Tech stays in third. Georgia and Alabama also staying put at four and five, respectively. UCLA moves up to six, putting the nation's six unbeaten teams at the front of the BCS standings. Back to Penn State and its big win in Champaign. Quarterback Michael Robinson who racked up 263 yards of total offense and was responsible for six touchdowns has been named Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. M. Rob finished 11 of 18 for 194 yards and four TDs. He also ran for 69 yards and two touchdowns. His six scores tied a school record set by Harry Robb in 1917. It's the fifth time this season an Indy Lions has been honored by the conference. Finally to the diamond, the Astros with an apparent flair for the dramatic. The problem, it's now two dramatic losses in four games. The script was familiar. Closer Brad Lidge untouchable during the regular season, taken deep in the final inning for the first. The first game was at home against Albert Pujols in game five of the NLCS. Last night it was in Chicago, a World Series game two walk-off shot by light-hitting Scott Besednik. The Sox now with a two-game lead, looking to inch closer to the franchise's first First World Series title in 88 years. We're not in the best of situations, obviously, but we feel we feel pretty good. We've got a history of being able to do it. We're coming back to our ballpark where we 
we played pretty well, and um, but bottom line is we need to step up and do it. Talking doesn't do a whole lot for it, but we we need to step up and play a little better. Greg was saying, but uh, Dave was the one that. The Pirates have started their offseason, which means they can start dealing with players and their contracts. First up, Dave Williams, who's inked a one-year deal, thus avoiding arbitration. Williams went 10-11 and 11 with a 4.41 ERA and 25 starts last season, leading the team in victories and setting career highs in every category. He was Pittsburgh's 17th round selection in the 1998 draft. He made his big league debut in 2001. His 58 career starts. Williams has 17 wins and 26 losses. Before we go, I want to mention it's week nine of the football season. Look out for the little Laurel Hyundai. Football is brought to you by The Zone and watch The Zone every Friday night, 11:15, right here on ABC 23. Natalie, back to you. Thanks, Eric. We'll be right back. Would you like to win an iPod Mini? No problem. Just download your favorite ringtone and you'll enter for a chance to win one. Just get your cell phone, text the code of your desired ringtone, and send it to number 40100. For Wait by the Yin Yang Twins, text A5 to 40100. For Hollaback Girl by Gwen Stefani, text B5 to number 40100. For Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day, text C5 to 40100. You can win an iPod Mini. What are you waiting for? Hurry, just download one of these ringtones for your chance to win one. Grab your cell phone now. Text the code of your desired ringtone and send to number 40100. It's so easy. For Wait by the Ying Yang Twins, text message A5 to number 40100. For Hollaback Girl by Gwen Stefani, text message B5 to number 40100. Here's a revised look at your Maple City Tire extended forecast. Rain and snow mixing through the midweek. Stray showers on Thursday. Sunshine for Friday, but we get more showers next Saturday and Sunday. All right, Travis, thank, thank you for joining us. Nightline is next. Have a great night. October 24th, 2005.